Hey everyone, this is Steve Corian from the PTC community bringing you another tutorial for Pro-E Wildfire. Uh, today I'm using Wildfire 5.0 <clears throat> and uh, Boundary Blend doesn't work any different in 4 or 3 or 2, I don't believe. Um, it pretty much works the same in all, all almost all versions of Pro-E. So if you're using 4, you can use the same tutorial or 3. Um, so I'm going to start you out with the basics right now. Uh, this is an introduction to Boundary Blend. Um, just so you can see these these two shapes that I have on my screen. Um, so the way Boundary Blend works is you know you have to have curves to be able to use Boundary Blend to make a surface. So I'm going to go into Insert and I'm going to go into Boundary Blend and you're going to see two collectors. Um, so if I click on the first collector and I select these two edges now it doesn't matter which order you select the edges that's another thing you can select them excuse me in any order um, but you see you're probably wondering what the second collector is there for let me get rid of these and you can see that it wants to create a straight surface okay that's what the second collector is for. The second collector is for your guide curves. So if I hold control and pick those two up, you can now see that it picked up that whole shape and is following these two guide curves all the way down to this edge down here. I'm at the green check mark, and there is your surface. If you have a simpler shape, uh, like this one up here that doesn't have sides to it this is just a half circle and a line okay then boundary blend works a little bit different uh, instead of using the second collector you just use the first one and select both curves because you don't have a guide a guide for the second collector so um, that's how you would tackle that shape so boundary blend is is really really simple and quick to use um, now I created these curves for you guys but I'm going to show you like a real you know a real job type problem that you know that we run into a lot as designers um, so we, you know on the job you, you tend to have to import a lot of files from customers or you know whoever um, and some of these purchase parts that you get or whatever that you know they're all surfaces and you know you, these have to go into your assembly well as everybody knows it's a pain to create a center line on you know a surfaced part like this because it's not solid it doesn't see this as a cylinder so it creates a lot of problems for us in mating and in in, uh, in our assemblies and just you know looks terrible on top of that so a quick and easy way to fix this part, and I'll just show you that it's hollow. Um, if I go to B, section B here, you can see that, that it's hollow. Now I'm not going to create with Boundary Blend in the the previous uh, tutorial that I showed you, the previous little exercise I just did. You saw that I had created curves. Well, you don't have to create curves to use Boundary Blend. You can use the edges that are already provided to create a surface with Boundary Blend. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So I'm going to go to Insert and Boundary Blend. And then I'm going to select the first collector. And I'm going to select this edge and this edge. And you'll see it wants to create a surface straight across. So I select the, select the second collector and I go and I select the other two edges that are the guide curves. Now I hit the green check mark and it creates that surface exactly where it needs to be following you know the guide curve following the curves that are already in this surface model so a quick one thing I wanted to show everybody uh, while we're doing this is that if you go into wireframe and you you're starting to surface a lot uh, what you'll start to notice is that when you have gaps in your surface they're gonna show up a different color so all the stuff that you see that's purple is line to line it's great it's it's all one surface okay 
the green that you see on your screen it could be any color blue or yellow or I don't know whatever your your settings are um, but it'll show up a different color so that right there tells me that's where my problem is on this part and I need to go create a surface there merge it to that surf you know the original surface the purple one and um, so I can fill those gaps up and make it a solid okay so I'll, I'll show you how to merge those in a second after we finish with the other two because until I merge these surfaces with you know together it's gonna they're gonna stay separate so okay so anyway so coming uh, back to the rest of this part I'm gonna go to let's see I'm gonna go to insert boundary blend and now it doesn't matter what uh which edge you know which side you select first it doesn't as long as you know you select them together like this one and this one um, it doesn't matter which one goes first um, so I mean I could pull this curve and then select you know the other ones as my boundaries you don't have to do this the, the straight ones or whatever they they it works all the same okay so that one's done and we'll come to this radius right here on the corner that needs to be filled in and I'm going to go to insert I want to go to boundary blend you know like you you would probably you guys you know are probably thinking oh I gotta select these first cuz you know I don't know what's gonna do with the shape that's not true you can select these radiuses and it'll create it you know you just gotta make sure you pick up those these long edges uh, so that it follows the whole path okay so uh, if I click this you're gonna see uh, that you know the services are created but everything you know you still have a couple places where they're green so what you do to fix that is you select your initial surface that's purple that you want to merge with and now you're gonna select your first boundary blend which was the inside one we created and I'm gonna to go to edit and I'm gonna to go to merge and I'm gonna hit OK now I have to select my merge and my boundary blend too and that's because your merge is now a, a copied part you know they're all merged the, those two surfaces became one so if I if I click the wireframe here you can see that now that there's no purple inside here because we merged that surface we created with boundary blend into our main mass of surfaces so we joined them together okay so you're going to do that again with the next two boundary blends that you created. You're going to merge those as well. So I'm going to select merge two, boundary blend three. You know, you can, uh, typically a good habit to get in, into doing is merging those surfaces as soon as you make them because it can get confusing later on down the road. Uh, this is a pretty simple model so I'm not really worried about that but I've had models with you know hundreds of boundary blends and merges and a good way when you're going through your layer tree to keep track of them is to merge that boundary blend right after you uh, make it because you won't you know if you got 10 boundary blends in a row and then you go and do 10 merges in a row it's gonna be a pain to figure out which ones connected to which one so uh, just suggest doing it every other I did it this way because this is a simple model but you know it's not a big deal so the part now is uh, if I if I go into transparency here into wireframe you'll see that I have no more green left on my part it's all gone that means everything all my surfaces are merged so I'm basically it's still a shell though we haven't solidified it yet which will make it a solid so if I, if I section it, you can see that it's it's still hollow. Um, we just merged the surfaces. So now we want to fill it, fill this up. So what you do is select Merge 3, hit Edit, go to Solidify, and hit the green check mark. Okay? And now you just made your first, you know, you just fixed your problem. This is now a solid part. If I section this, you'll see that it's solid which makes all the difference in the world for me when I'm using parts and assemblies so yes I'll show you why let me hide this
so this being that this is a you know now a solid part it's easier to uh you know to work with this part and and get a, and do masses and add material and stuff to the parts so that's basically what i want you know wanted to show you guys today and, and show you how easy boundary blend is uh, if you have any questions feel free to comment and rate and um if you have you know a problem that you need solved you know uh, send me send me the file or the question and i can uh model it up as a tutorial for you all right that thanks guys and this is steve corian from the ptc community